G'day everyone, uh, this is a video on first order linear recurrence relations. Fancy long word, it's not as complicated as what the, the title might suggest. It really is quite simple and actually it's a far more practical way of looking at sequences. So if you've done your work in sequences and you're up to the part where you're looking at first order linear recurrence relations, then this is the spot you need to be. You should be good with arithmetic progressions. You see we're referring to the term before, so it's a recursive formula. We're adding something. Now this could be a negative number, but we're adding something. And we start at some point A. It doesn't really matter where we start, I'm not so worried about that. We've got a geometric progression, which is the same thing. We're multiplying the previous number to get the next one. Recursive again. And we start at some number B. I'm not really fussed about the number. This part on the end is, is really quite inconsequential to the idea. So now when we're talking about this, we're really talking when multiple things are happening. So can you see how here, I've kind of combined the multiply part and the add part. Okay, I've combined the multiply and the add part together to get here. Now of course if I'm going to combine it together, I would actually need to have the same starting value, but that, that's aside for the moment. So this formula here says that to get to the next term, I take the current one and multiply by something that might be a, an increase, a growth, or it might be a decay, a decrease. Could be either. And then once I've done that, I then add or subtract something. Now you might think, well, yeah, why? Like, do them separately. Well, maybe things are happening at the same time. Let me give you an example. Here's one here. Let's suggest that you run a farm. Currently, you've got a thousand sheep on the farm. And each year, you know that about 5%, 5% of the sheep have a, a lamb. So 5% of them have a lamb. So that means if you do nothing else, your numbers are growing at 5%. But you also know, you also know that some of the sheep that you have, you grow them for wool, some of them pass away. Okay, they're, they're getting old, you send them off, they're done. They become the lamb dinner next week. So you know that some of them you, you, you send away. So you've got a growth factor here from birth, and you've got a subtraction factor here from end of life. So this situation is a more practical situation. So let's have a look at the numbers over here. Starting with 1,000, notice I've called it T0, because that's the time right now. Okay? T1 would be in one year's time. So the numbers here. T0 is 1,000 right now. T1, so we're going to have 1,000 plus 50. That's me working out the 5%. Okay? To work out 5%, divide it by 10, divide it by 2. Divide by 10 gets me 100. Divide by 2 gets me 50. That's 5%. There we go. And then the minus 20 is the, the ones that don't make it. So here we go, 1,050 minus 20, 1,030. That's my next starting number. So then the next line would be plus, now it would be 51.5. Now you might go, we can't, we can't work with that. We can't really. Because this is a practical example, I'd have to think, well, am I going to round that up or round that down? But let's just carry through with the numbers for now. 51.5 is 5% of that. Divided by 10 will get you 103. Divide that by 2, 51.5, and the same minus 20 would happen here. Now that means that the difference here is 31.5. Adding it on there gets me 1,061.5. Now again, I'd have to decide what I'm going to do with that 0.5. I mean, of course, I can't have 0.5 of a sheep. But I might do my numbers and then round at my final answer. Now you can see here what's actually happening. If you just look at these values, started there, came to there, came to there. So that would mean that my population is growing over time. Now you as the farmer might then go, you know what? Okay, well fair enough. If it's growing, I might not have enough feed or enough room for more sheep. So that would say that instead of doing 20 sheep that I know are gonna pass away each year, I might go, you know what, 20 are going to pass away, but I'm actually going to sell maybe 20 as well. So you might change this number to 40, minus 40. So you might say I'm going to know that 20 are going to pass away, and 40 
I'm go sorry, another 20, I'm going to sell. So that might keep your numbers in check here. You might redo this calculation and see how you're going for numbers. Okay? And you might work four or five years in the future, say, okay, well, it seems like I can keep a stable population given this particular birth rate and given this number here. Now, of course, let's parallel that to a different example, a different animal. Okay? Uh, let's suggest instead of sheep, you're farming cats. Now, I don't know anyone that farms cats, but follow with my example here. The birth rate of cats, of course, cats have a litter. All right? They could have five or six or seven kittens. So the percentage rate here would be a lot higher simply because from one uh, mother and father, you have six or seven being born, whereas sheep, generally, it's just the one. Okay, so this, if it was if it was uh, sheep, sorry, if it was cats, we were talking about this might need to be as high as 1.65. I don't know what the number would be, but we might model some things and see what was happening there. It could even be higher than one, because really you've got a set of parents and six or seven being born, sometimes even more. You may actually find that they replace themselves. Uh, three or four times over and, and one cat can have six or seven maybe litters over her lifespan. So this number here may well need to be significantly higher and this number, this number might be around how many you're going to cull, how many you're going to get rid of. So this number might be into the hundreds, might be into the thousands depending where you start. So if you were, if you were managing, say, a, a city and you had a bit of a feral cat problem, you might look at these numbers and say, you know what, this is what's happening. They breed all the time. We've got lots of kittens around. We're starting with a thousand. That's our estimate of the population in the city. We might need to cull 500 a year, 800 a year, 2,000 a year to keep the numbers stable or to get them to come down. So this first order linear recurrence relation is really combining AP and GP into one and then recognising how can we use that in a practical example. Hopefully this has given you the idea of what we're doing here. Run a situation like this through and play the numbers four or five or six years in advance and see what's happening. Come back, readjust one of these, replay the numbers and then you'll see the, the idea that's going on. Hope this one's helped. Enjoy guys. Catch you later.